Okay, I want to call the uh, meeting of the Arlington Finance Committee to order. Uh, <clears throat> first thing, just to remind you, on Monday, the uh, school department, superintendent, school committee, and wherever else she feels like bringing. Uh, don't bring too many people, though. We don't have a lot of chairs. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll be here, and uh, Ish, I sent out an email from uh, the superintendent. Uh, they don't have a CFO right now, except for a, a temporary one. Uh, so she requested that any questions from the budget, especially more detailed questions as opposed to general policy questions, could you please send those to her as soon as possible? Today. Today. Well, the reason why is that um, Ms. Mertz is only in tomorrow to help answer the questions, the ones that I can't answer. Okay. So I'll go home tonight, read the whole thing, <laughs> <laughs> or do it really, really early in the morning, uh, or as soon as you can. Uh, I'll try my best at the yeah. later. Than that. Okay. The second issue is uh, the minutes. Uh, are there any corrections to the minutes? Yeah, I think on the second page it should be ten thousand. Uh, okay. Second page. Should be 10,000, not 10. Add another zero. I, I don't know. I'm just asking. Just look. Down. It's 10,000 to the capital. Thank Right. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's actually I had a down perpetual care, care for both of them. Is it for the uh, uh, cleaning and restoration or of the gravestones? Is that the purpose? Yeah, I think that's what the 10,000 is for. Okay, well, that's in the or an article yeah. now, so, or that's in the, the motion now, so if you could check it. And it's uh, 200,000 to, that's, uh, Christine, Christine, is 200,000 to you? Uh, yes. <clears throat> yes. Okay, so Peter, should be 200,000 yes. there. The cemetery commission. Yeah, 200,000 to the uh, cemetery commissioners. Any other questions or, or uh, corrections? Okay, Peter, uh, at the bottom of the first page, <coughs> Article 35, rescind votes. You've got 17,000 in one place and 15,000 in the other. Should be 17 in both. Any other corrections? <clears throat> Do I have a motion? Second? Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor of uh, accepting the minutes as corrected, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, please have all of your budgets and ready to present. Uh, by next Wednesday. You know, we, uh, we might be able to do a couple to that tonight. Uh, Monday, <coughs> the school committee usually takes most of the evening. Uh, but I'd like to have those done. Okay, so the articles today uh, are focusing for the first, uh, for the superintendent and the uh, town manager on the uh, party and the gives. So with that, I'll turn it over to whoever. Why don't we start off with the Hardy? Okay, if I start. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so I, uh, I provided a memo. I don't know how many of you had an opportunity to take a look at it uh, on the Hardy expansion project, and also uh, forwarded around were cost projections performed by Shamit a study in cost projections performed by HMFH Architects, and I think that was uh, Oh, and, and a, a secondary analysis uh, performed uh, in regards to cafeteria renovations at the Hardy School. So this particular project uh, that we're asking for $3.5 million for uh, is already in the capital budget, but we're asking for an appropriation under Article 3 at the special town meeting so that we can have access to funds for this project before July 1st so that we can start the process of hiring an architect so we can start design in order to get the project done 
by September of 2018. So just a little background as is laid out in the memo. Uh, <laughs> starting at the end of 2016, um, we started, uh, the School Enrollment Task Force started again discussing capacity issues in, in the district, focused on the Hardy Elementary School. We had HMFH architects work with the superintendent and the administration on an analysis of what, those, what the capacity needs actually were. It was demonstrated that three to four uh, more classrooms would be needed in addition to the current space at the school based on enrollment projections. And this is, uh, and, and there's some of the data on this is within the report that HMFH put together. Uh, we're going from basically having uh, three grades at each level to four. So the, the cohorts are growing larger and larger. And as they move through the system, the school capacity gets <coughs> tighter and tighter. All of those figures are not taking into account any potential further enrollment growth if the MUGAR development uh, goes forward. Uh, there's been varying analysis on how many students may come from such a development, um, but there would certainly be students and they're not even accounted for in the enrollment projections as we're looking at them today. So the School Enrollment Task Force voted to recommend uh, based, on, uh, based on the demonstrated need, the potential need, as well as the probably the best investment of a permanent solution going forward with a six classroom permanent addition at the Hardy. In an initial cost estimation done by HMFH Architects, they had suggested that such an addition at 5,400 square feet might cost about $2.4 million. Uh, to be very sure of that before moving forward with any proposals, we asked Shawmet Design, uh, Shawmet Construction and Design, who are the construction managers at the Gibbs Project, to do a further cost estimation or a peer review cost estimation. And they came back with a construction cost of $2.6 million. And actually, I'll call your attention to the chart on the back page of my memo. So everything that Shawmet put together is at the top of that chart. You'll see Shawmet hard costs and Shawmet construction soft costs. They built in certain design and construction contingencies, testing, lead designation um, into that figure. Below that are figures that I, in consultation with the PTBC, put on to the project budget. So you can see design fees to hire an architect, OPM fees, <coughs> commissioning fees, furniture, uh, fixtures and equipment, and technology for a total project, estimated project budget of 3.5 million. Going back just a little bit, the School Enrollment Task Force also, at their last meeting, started to talk about cafeteria capacity issues at the Hardy. There's been a number of options talked about ranging um, ranging in cost, and there's actually, again, that's that study in the packet that was passed around. Um, the superintendent can speak to this more in depth. I think she's leaning more uh, towards a lower cost option uh, that's actually not even included in the study that's before you. It would be using a room across the hall from the cafeteria, uh, from the existing cafeteria uh, for cafeteria space. So we've put in a cost allowance of $50,000 for a cafeteria alternate that's yet to be decided upon. So the last thing I'll say is it's, um, it's definitely a little unorthodox um, or unusual for us to ask for a full appropriation and borrowing authorization for a project before we have bids in hand. Uh, but based on the timing of both the Springtown meeting, when we expect to have a fall town meeting, and when we want this project to be completed, um, it, it doesn't line up to, to wait to have any types of bids in hand. So if we get an uh, authorization now, we can go out and start to hire an OPM and an architect. We're not expecting to be ready for a special town meeting on zoning until November, and that would be too late to award a construction contract. So that's why we're asking for the appropriation now so that we can start immediately with the hopes of having it open again by September of 18. Oh, I think it's quite clear. So okay, happy, happy uh, questions. questions on the Hardy School? Alan? So uh, talk about the potential impact of UGAR and, and it, it almost seems like you know, we wouldn't want to finalize plans for the Hardy until the UGAR situation is settled one way or another. So I guess I, um, I'll say I'll answer that in a few different ways. So we, we looked at this internally, upside down, left and right, trying to figure out if, you know, what, what current data do we have that could project how many students, would, or how many children or families with children of school age would live there. So we looked at uh, one, two, and three bedroom 
uh, condos in East Arlington. We looked at one, two, and three bedroom apartments in East Arlington. So the distribution of school age children was. We looked at single family homes in East Arlington. We looked at how many school age children were in the Sims uh, redevelopment and the Brigham's redevelopment. And the high, using all that data, the high we came up to, I think, was about 23 students, 22 students. So not, not a lot of students. Uh, the architect from HMFH Architects said in the work that she's doing across the state, uh, at development of the size that's being proposed would see far more students than that. Uh, and that, that she's probably right because when we're looking at distribution among apartments and condos, that's a bit of a fixed population that turns over one at a time. This would be 200 new units coming on at once with people coming in to a very attractive school district where people are trying to get in and live. So it certainly could be a bigger population. I'd say if, if there's 50 students, 75 students, and or let's say there's a, a large number, 75 and 50 of them are in the elementary school, that wouldn't give me any pause to go forward with this because I don't think on the site we could do any more than six classrooms responsibly. So if we have that type of surge of students, I think we're going to be thinking about an alternative that's off-site anyways. That's, that's how I would respond to that. Well, if, if, if we have, up, you say, three to four classrooms per grade, how many uh, additional students could that handle compared to today, 30, 16? Yeah, I'll let you look. Yeah, so that. We, we do have four, we will be having four classes per grade at Hardy. Um, in that configuration, class sizes are, are in the low 20s. Some are a little bit higher. But uh, it's possible that you have an, a, a class that comes through with five. If it's not all the grades, then we'd have capacity for a, a couple of outliers like that. I, I think we would just have to wait and wait and see. But I, I agree with uh, Adam that if we see a surge that we don't expect, the Hardy's not going to be the solution, and we can't really add much more on there than we have. So six is the maximum. There's, there's no other space right now. That's really going to compromise <laughs> the playground, and in fact, uh, enough so that. We are going to be looking at that, that uh, slice of land that's between the school and Lake Street to perhaps uh, have some additional play areas for the, for the children. Okay, now did you say the, the original request was three to four extra classrooms? And the, this is for six. Mm -hmm. So you do have two. Yes. Right. yes. Theoretically extra. Okay. Well, uh, get a pinch. Yeah. You're hiding back there. Dean. Oh, thank you. <laughs> So just, and I think it's just to sort of help the committee, so it's kind of a leading question. So when we're talking about, you made the comment about how it's highly unusual to ask for all the money up front. Um, in some ways, it's sort of a, it's a mild race against time, because um, this is for everyone here. We have, the school right now has 21 classrooms. All are being occupied. The lower grades are the four cohort grades, K1, 2. The upper grade three, four, and five have three classrooms. So the assumption going in right now is that in the fall, we're gonna be at that sort of like Thompson was last year. I'll call it a minus one position where you're gonna need 22 classrooms, but you're only gonna have 21, right? So what's gonna happen at the Hardy's, you're gonna, I guess we'll call it blend a classroom. You're gonna have a bunch of outraged parents, blah, 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 blah. Um, and so the key is to get the project started, and you correct me if I'm wrong, started, <laughs> worked on and finished by the time we get to fall of 18, so we don't go to minus two. And I think we do have some experience with that recently with Thompson, because Thompson didn't start until, um, until late the fall this year. So this is where I'm sort of getting with the question is, it, it's, I'm guessing, you can correct me if I'm wrong, that your desire to do this now is based on your Thompson experience, which with a tight time frame and probably not something we want to do again, considering Gibbs <coughs> will be starting and whatnot. Yeah, is that fair? May, may I? Yeah. yeah, no, I think that's totally fair. And uh, in the Thompson case, we did um, have design money in the spring of last year, so the whole addition was designed. But if you're recalling correctly, that we didn't approve the actual construction money until October, uh, so we were <coughs> pinched. In, in general, I'll say the, these these are just tight timelines we've been dealing with. The, the Thompson timeline, the Gibbs timeline, the Hardy timelines—they're tight. They're doable. Uh, the, the architects and OPMs that we hire are. And construction firms advise that they're doable, but they're certainly 
tight. You know, there's not a lot of room for mistakes in terms of meeting the timelines. Yeah, I mean, because just to have some clarity, right? I know Charlie and Al were there, but um, to my recollection, when you guys first proposed the Thompson timeline, time that the chair of the Permanent Town Building Committee was not too pleased with how tight you mapped it out. I mean, he sort of said, look, you, got, you need more time than this. You're, you're leaving zero margin by starting in September, October. I mean, I, that was my recollection of, yeah. of, of how it went. And then to one last thing I, I will say, and this is sort of just, you, we can sort of help Alan clarify what he asked, was, and I remember the one meeting I had filled in for Al at School Roman Task Force, is you sort of realize that even though Sims is a big project, it's not the first large development in town. So you had Brigham, you had, not Sims, Mugar. So you had Sims, Brigham, and I think they call it Legacy, which I, I have been told exists somewhere. I don't know where that is. Um, so that's what they had done. If they had gone back with their analysis and said, what did it do for an impact of, of kids when each one happened? And it really came out, I think it's fair to say, when I was popping up what you did, it came out a lot less than people would have expected. So if you extrapolate that as your past history into Hardy, it, it really, even in a worst case scenario, it wasn't that many. Kids and when it did it, it was K to 12, so it wasn't all because when you said an upper threshold would be like four, let's say 25, let's say it was 25 to 50. Yeah, that's all across 12 grades, that's not across exactly right. Yeah, so it's 50 yeah. kids across 12, 13 grades. You average that out, let's say four kids a grade, it wasn't really all that crushing. John, yeah, um, Adam, besides the Ugar risk, what were the other considerations? terms of the decision between, you know, selection of six over four permanent classrooms? I think, I'm trying to recall the discussion at the School Enrollment Task Force meeting, and I I think it was a decision based upon, and I'll, I'll let perhaps Al and Charlie speak to a little bit of their perspective um, as members of that task force, but that in terms of wise investment while we were mobilized, and given that we think we have decent projections but they're they're just that they're projections or they're a forecast that while we were mobilized while we were constructing while, and while we were possibly in the future going to face further capacity restrictions at other district uh, other schools in the district you know wh why not why not make the long-term investment into additional classrooms to hedge against future risk and would there be cost savings doing it all at once as opposed to in the future, have to yeah, add another floor or whatever. There's always mobilization cost savings. So you're, you're paying to get, you know, the con the contractor on site is con all of his construction materials, his trailer, all the mobilization costs are once instead of twice. So there's some economy of scale or, or efficiency in doing that. Thank you. Charlie? Yes, uh, I, I wouldn't like the committee to think that we're building two extra classrooms there. Because at the school enrollment task force, the uh, HMHF, is that the right? HMFH. H M F H, whatever they are, yeah. Yeah. in their study, and it, there was a detailed discussion that <clears throat> that the um, using art and other uh, well special program capacity at the at the uh, Hardy was already severely restricted. With the additional uh, students, there would be further restricted. So those additional classrooms are meant to serve uh, <clears throat> not necessarily an additional you know, 20 student classroom space, but they're intended to serve uh, for the uh, an academic, I don't know what you call it, but uh, special programs such as art, music, and uh, special education. May I add a comment? That's exactly right. Um, one of the situations at Hardy right now is that the teachers have a teacher's workroom <coughs> slash cafe, you know, place to have lunch that had to be given up uh, for a classroom. And uh, so right now it's in a, they're in a room about the quarter of the size of this room. So that's an issue. Music is another issue. In fact, that's how we're going to solve the problem next year is that we're going to move, move music either uh, into a room about half the size that it is, but we need a music room. And we we're talking about an alternative to the cafeteria. The alternative to the cafeteria is actually the room across the hall is the music room. So if that room gets utilized for cafeteria, we need another room for the music. 
Um, we also, as, as the enrollment increases at Hardy, what we also need is more space for our English language learners program. The, the, the rooms that we have right now are, are increasingly becoming inadequate. So it's a combination of all of these things. So I, I wanted to agree with Charlie that this is not like we're, we're uh, adding two extra classrooms. They will be utilized. What the challenge will be with NUGAR is that if we ever did need a rogue fifth classroom at a certain grade, we're, we're either going to compress a class or we're going to have to give up another space to make sure we have it. So I think that as we look to the future, it's a wise investment, but it's actually space that is not is going to be utilized right away. Okay, additional questions? Okay, any discussion? Okay, I think what I'd like to do, since we're sort of getting to the end of our uh, finance committee season, so to speak, uh, we only have four more, that... Uh, if the, if the Finance Committee feels satisfied with the explanation uh, and the information on the Hardy School, uh, we could take a vote if somebody wants to make a motion while well, we have some expertise here that we could draw on, or if the committee would rather we can vote, at it, vote on it uh, next Wednesday. Dean? I move as recommended. Second. With one caveat. <laughs> My caveat is that if we have to pull anything out of the capital budget, that the Finance Committee entrusts its Vice Chair and Chair of the Capital Planning Committee to do it, so we don't have to come back and read about the capital budget. Okay, if I remember correctly, this is a debt exclusion. No, no, it's no, not. This is already in the capital budget. This is already in the capital. Oh, I stand corrected. It's not in the capital budget. Okay, right. So I move as recommended, with, and then we will trust Charlie to reconcile it out <coughs> if he has to, because it's going to be in two articles now. He's used to the heavy weight on his shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is there a move and second it? Discussion? Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Favorable action? This is for 50K, is that right? For 3,000, 3, 3, that's right, 3,500,000. Unanimous? 315. Okay, now we can put all those materials away and pull out the Gibbs materials. Okay, uh, Okay. so the Gibbs renovation, uh, now we have already appropriated 2,550,000 last fall for design. So this would be for the construction. Uh, Mr. Manager. Thank you. Uh, so similar to the Hardy matter, uh, provided a memo for the board's, uh, the committee's review. Uh, attached to that memo is also uh, a project budget review. And the superintendent has provided uh, in the packet that was handed out tonight, uh, some a very a brief overview of the design uh, and schematic of the school itself and the layout of the, uh, the classrooms. So just t taking a quick step back, you'll, you'll probably all recall last year, uh, School Enrollment Task Force met quite a bit, a uh, number of community engagements to discuss what to do about a middle school capacity issue. The decision was made to move forward with taking back the Gibbs School that had been leased out to uh, private nonprofit tenants for many years and renovate that to be used as a townwide sixth grade. Uh, so that was uh, adopted by the School Enrollment Task Force, the school committee, town meeting, and then ultimately the voters via a debt exclusion. So after that debt exclusion passed, and after, as the chair mentioned, uh, we were successful in getting an appropriation from town meeting of $2.55 million. We hired an owner's project manager, or an OPM, and we hired an architect to begin designing the renovation. So that is still underway. Um, we also made the decision as that design began to use the construction manager at risk method of procurement for this project. Uh, normally we do design bid where an architect designs it, we put it out to competitive bid and <coughs> multi uh, multiple construction firms will bid on it. In this model, you bring on a construction firm based on their submission to a request for qualifications at the beginning of the project and they work with the architect during design on constructability testing and they do a lot of testing up front so they know what they're going to face when they go into the project. So in that 
For that, we uh, brought on Shamit, who I mentioned earlier, uh, who helped us out with the, uh, the Hardy cost estimation. So as they've gone through this project um, and put together their, their cost estimates, they're now still in the design development cost estimate phase, uh, they are estimating that the project is going to cost just shy of $27 million, inclusive of the 2.55 that's already been appropriated. And one of the primary drivers of the difference, or I should have, I, I didn't mention, the debt exclusion was, was premised on a $25 million project cost. And that project cost was based on a study that was done by HMFH last year. One of the main differences between what's currently being proposed in the design and what was initially discussed based, uh, and, and was used to come up with a $25 million cost estimate uh, is the need to do exterior repointing and exterior work on the building as well as window replacement. Uh, that was not factored in by HMFH in the initial study. It's being recommended by the design team now. Um, so that, that is how we are at $27 million. The PTBC, the superintendent, myself, the facilities director have also asked the design team to come up with some value engineering recommendations, ways we could bring down the cost. We reviewed those last Friday with the team, uh, and none of them, uh, well, the ones that we could push off are, say, $50,000, refinishing the gym floor. That could be done separate from the project, uh, and some minor HVAC tweaks. Uh, we, we could consider pushing those off. Everything else would diminish the programmatic uh, benefit and operations of the school, so we're not recommending pursuing any of those value engineering measures. So we're recommending or requesting that we move to a $27 million project budget. And how do we get to that from a $25 million debt exclusion? Well, as I laid out in the memo, there's really two independent measures that we can use to get to that. First, the Department of Revenue allows you to inflate debt exclusions based on construction uh, cost inflation indices that they use. Uh, the, so they would actually let us inflate it for 13 months' time if we didn't go out to borrow this until July of 2017, since it passed in June of 2016. The same time period, 12 months prior, June 15 to July 16, uh, construction uh, inflation, the index they were using suggested a 3.4% increase. So we'd be able to inflate uh, the availability of funds via the debt exclusion probably by about 850,000 to a, a million dollars. The remainder to get up to 27 million uh, could be taken from the uh, just the general capital budget. Uh, I had a conversation with the chair of the capital planning committee and made up to this discussion, um, and I know he expressed a, will a willingness to, to work and adapt the capital budget to be able to get this project done. Uh, on the schedule, we're looking at it and in the, the manner in which we want to get it done. So I think that, well, let, let me point out uh, on the, the project budget review page that you have, just so you. Uh, are clear. So above the line, we have the total construction cost <coughs> under uh, Shamit DD estimate. You see that at 21 million. We have the architect fee below, the OPM fee, hazmat, moving costs, some other small lines. Uh, but I want to point out, just, just so you have a feeling of safety in what we're asking for, we're still carrying a 10% construction cost contingency in this $27 million or $26.9 million figure that we're talking about. And back up above, we're still also carrying $833,000 in design contingency and what's called the GMP, a guaranteed maximum price contingency of $499,000. So we feel like via this request, we're getting the project done as we, as we think it should get done, but we're also pretty well protected against the prices spiking above this $27 million request that we're making. So I don't know if you want to add anything to that. Yeah. I think you explained it very well. We, we did go through all of the value engineering and we couldn't really find anything of any substantive amount. Perhaps the only other, the only thing that made the possibility is the generator, but um, that's, that's a concerning, um, a, a concerning reduction. So uh, the, we all felt that the contingency was um, w well was well positioned for the project, and right now we're so far into the design of the project that the contingency that we're holding on it is actually quite adequate. Okay, questions, Bill? 
call them design contingencies. So that number is there and will stay there. But if there's no uh, changes, major changes in design, does that, do those funds come back? Yeah, so what happens with design contingency, as design continues to progress, it either goes into the construction cost because it was needed to be there as a contingency and it actually, <coughs> actually goes into the project, or it goes away. So what we don't, if, if it's not going into construction costs, we don't spend the money. But it's got the, a little bit of a sense that maybe it's going to uh, go away. Did that, that up from you? Or? Um, I hope that's what happens, but I don't. I wouldn't want to guarantee that. As they, so the, in this construction <coughs> manager at risk model, Shawmet issues a series of um, of bids for subcontractors to bid on work. Uh, so as they continue to do that, they'll get tighter and tighter pricing before the project. Uh, kicks off. It, it is probably likely that the entirety of that eight hundred thousand dollars won't go into construction, uh, but it, but it could, depending on how prices come in. Okay, Bill. Yeah, uh, other you. questions? Dean. Hi, uh, Kitsit Drilly, the chair of the Capital Planning Committee. What would come out of FY eighteen? Do you have any idea? Well, we hope nothing. <coughs> Okay. We, we, um, he committed to cutting something. Well, we'll see. I mean, we have to do some work. But uh, generally speaking, uh, you know, we always have some reserves in the uh, budgeting process. So uh, we may be able to, uh, let's put it this way, a million dollars, this, that shortfall will be. Uh, oh, it's a bonded million. Not it's a bonded million, million dollars, yeah. that's right. And so oh, it'll, it'll it. cost somewhere between uh, depending upon whether it's 30 year or 20 year, it'll be uh, between 33 and 50 thousand dollars a year in principal, and maybe 15 thousand dollars a year in interest. So you're talking about 50 thousand to 65 thousand dollars a year, and um, you know I think we can probably find that somewhere out of an existing reserve. Well, we have some we have some reserves. We have you know supportive funds that we can move around. Got it. Okay. Other questions. Peter. Is this Article 4 that you're... Yes, right. it is. Uh, yes, and uh, I, I neglected to mention this is also, we're also asking for this in the special town meeting Article <coughs> 4, again, so we can have access to the funds before July 1st. Um, under, under this, again, construction manager risk model, uh, they will issue as a series of guarantee maximum prices so they can get some early bids out for ordering of materials and to start some work. So we will need access to these funds before July 1st for the project. So you're asking for us to take action on the special town meeting and no action on the annual town meeting? That is accurate. Yes. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> the construction manager at risk is basically, uh, he guarantees the 26965000 million, is that? Yeah, once we lock in for that guarantee maximum price, then that number is the guarantee maximum price with the allowance to go into that guarantee maximum price contingency. And, and this is basically a cost plus contract? Um, I guess um, unless something is absolutely proven to be unforeseen, yeah, uh, yes, I, it, yeah. I, think uh, that I mean, within that within that band. So, yeah. so if, it, if the actual costs come in under, it's all open book. It's, it's open book. It yeah. comes down. Yeah, how low? Correct. And uh, does the construction manager at risk somehow guarantee the delivery date? Um, they, we will have. I believe we'll have liquidated damages like we would on any project for um, a late project but because of the nature of this where it's where it's open book and they only make what they what they actually spend or, or, or expend on the project what I'm told by our OPM is that the CM model gives them even more incentive to get out on time because then they can just go start with the job mm -hmm. so, so that's at least my understanding now how was Sean selected what kind of a process did you go through so we issued a request for qualifications, uh, working with our OPM and several members of the Permanent Town Building Committee. Uh, I believe we had three applicants and interviewed two firms, uh, and Shaman was selected. Okay. So it was an open bid process, but it was it was not a price bid, it was a qualification bid. Correct. Okay. Uh, other questions? Peter. Uh, I, I don't think I got it the first time around. How, how is this uh, money going to be? Allocated. It's, it's really in the FY18 budget at this point, as I understand it. How does, it, how does it come out of that and get pushed ahead? 
Well, it's a borrowing. We're authorizing a borrowing. So uh, the only amount, it, it, a lot of it would depend on when they finance it, but the only thing that would probably be in the fiscal 18 budget is, is interest, and that would be exempted. Okay, that's good. So how about the uh, RD? S it was in the capital budget. It, it was in the five-year plan, the budget five-year plan that we presented uh, last week at three and a half million dollars. I've got so in FY18. In, in FY18, but it's bonded. So the first year we would be the the impact on the first year is we assume it's a three percent interest. It's you know ten thousand dollars or something like that. And and then after that you start paying principal and interest. And we have we have done this on other capital projects before. I think even one of the phases of this building, uh, we requested and received a bond authorization at a special town meeting. So sort of during this period of the year, you know, the second half of the fiscal year, but the actual capital cost wasn't budgeted until the following fiscal year because that's when the the borrowing costs were actually um, actually happening. So when you bond it next, let's say the treasurer bonds it next September, there'll only be a six-month interest cost in fiscal 18, which which would be included in the capital budget as, as exempt debt. Uh, and then the following year, fiscal 19, you'll have both principal and interest comes to. Sorry. So so the if the uh, special town meeting is in early May and it ends in May, then the money can be spent for the for the. the Appropriation will be approved early in May, not uh, sometime in July, which is what happens at the end of the regular town meeting. So that puts the town in a position to marshal its resources, do its contracts, etc., and then be on the ground and ready to spend money uh, at the start of the fiscal year. Thank you. Okay, other questions? One of the bigger projects in a while. Okay, uh, Alan. Oh, of course, I, I know this is maybe a little bit off topic, but there, I know there's been discussion about the traffic in the area and potentially a, a new cut through there. Is that been uh, yes, it was. And in fact, it, this is an old diagram. So what I did on here, if you notice, there is some purple, actually the blue, was put there to indicate that that, that driveway has been taken out. There will not be a cut through in the so back. public traffic. Okay, any other questions? Dean? Move it recommended. Second. Okay, Actually, so the motion's been made and seconded. Sorry, can I amend that? So two things, one, move is recommended, <coughs> and two, that the Finance Committee empowers the Vice Chair to screw around with for reserves to fit the million. So we don't have to I'll figure out some legal language for <laughs> screw around. <laughs> Mess around? <laughs> Okay, so the appropriate made and seconded the appropriation would be twenty four million four hundred and fifty thousand. because uh, we've already appropriated the design money last fall. The total of the two would equal twenty seven million uh, for that. Any further discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Thank you. Two fifteen seventeen. Uh, Senator Allen. I'm sorry, uh, Paul? Did we vote the whole 27 million? Or did we already voted the 2,550 last fall. Okay. <laughs> so all we have to do now is basically the, the construction. Yeah. Uh, Charlie? Yes, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, I'd like to ask the uh, indulgence of the Finance Committee to uh, rework the uh, capital plan and budget as presented last week to include the additional million dollars. Um, bonded cost for the uh, Gibbs project. Okay. Is there any question on that? Okay. Do I have a motion? So we'll move. Second. Okay. Moved and seconded to allow the chairman of the uh, Capital Budget Committee uh, to make adjustments specifically for uh, the extra interest in this case uh, and future five years for the extra million dollars or so. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. 
And one more, Article 40 of the annual town meeting is the other Gibbs renovation. Uh, Move no action. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, moved and seconded for no action on Article 40, uh, which is just a duplicate of this, so we're taking action on the special. Any questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? Okay, so uh, does anybody have any questions for the superintendent in advance of next Monday so she could think about it? I don't get that country. Nothing. Okay. Uh, okay, well, uh, I have one. How do you go from eight to two or three? Um, the primary reduction was due to actually looking at actual salaries versus projected salaries. And the literally, um, um, our, our new interim uh, CFO and our new accountant went through every single salary in, the, uh, in, in this budget. Then the other uh, major piece was looking at our legal costs this year. For this year, while some other costs have gone up a lot, legal costs have not. And so we were able to move some of those costs over there. What are you going to do with 300000 I'm specialized. Well, we're, that, we're going to be going to the to town that? meeting to go for this, the money in the stabilization account. Um, we also have a, um, a tuition in uh, account for special education, and we'll go there first as an alternative. But then there's also, this is not what I would prefer to do, but it, but it is as a backup, um, the, the international account. Thank you. Now the other article that, uh, you know, we can discuss this, but if you want to give us a brief overview is Article 5 in the special town meeting on the special education stabilization fund. Uh, how much did you put in last year? I think it was... It was, was 325000 I'm sorry? 325000 And how much do you <coughs> are recommending we take out? 325000 <laughs> It was an opportunity to save that money for exactly this kind of a situation. Um, one of the things that I will have for everyone next week, in fact, I could probably even send it to you uh, at the end of this week, is a budget to, uh, budget to actuals in special education over the last, since FY11, and looking at the variability of the changes in uh, incre the increases, the percent increases over that time period, so that you have that information. Okay, I have that, uh, you know, I'm looking at the, uh, the vote under Article 2 of the Special Town Meeting last April of 200,000. Did we change that when we got to Town Meeting? I think so. I believe we put 325 in. But you know what? I'm, I'm pretty sure we did. We've been talking about using that amount of money. I think it's 325. There already a balance in there. Okay. There may have been, but I know that that is the balance right now. Okay. Charlie? Kathy, the, uh, <clears throat> there was an article in the paper within the last two or three weeks indicating that the state was considering putting some sort of restraint on the growth of the out of the district tuition for, for special education. Was that a or something like that happened? But it hasn't happened yet, and, and there has been discussion about that. There's been discussion about that every year there's been that discussion because what happens in private out uh, of district placements, they petition to the Board of Education to uh, go up and they, they then send out a notice to districts if you want to contest it. They usually come in with, well, our salaries are this, we've had these capital costs, and, and to justify the percent increase. But they have, you know, cumulatively, they've been big increases, and uh, this is 
so the board, so the Department of Education has talked about we should be looking at really some caps on, on these costs. But as far as I know, that has not happened yet. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Uh, Ms. Bode, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate it. I'll see you on Monday. Okay, that's right. We we'll try to have as many chairs as we can. Okay. Uh, okay, now we switch to Article. Well, let's get the easy one out of the way first. Article 46 is the. Okay, there was two new. Article 46 of the Appropriation for Town Celebrations and Events. Uh, and so uh, there's two new ones that are the manager placed in here uh, that we haven't had before. One was the uh, expenditure of funds for the Feast of the East for $2,500. And the other is the Town Day Celebration uh, for $10,000. Okay, so. What are these two sums for, and why do we need them now after all these years? So I'll, I'll start with Town Day. Uh, the Board of Selectmen had requested that after the many, many years of fundraising, that the burden of raising what I think is somewhere between forty and $50,000 a year for Town Day um, was a, a, a real burden on both the volunteers and the administrative staff of the Board of Selectmen. So they asked that if I would consider filing something to defray that burden to show uh, town taxpayer contribution to the town day celebration. So um, Sandy and I in the budget preparation talked about what could be the rationale and we thought about this. There's quite a few police details and DPW time that's put into making town day happen. So I, I pulled some numbers uh, for tonight. The past four years of town day celebrations uh, the, poli the average police detail cost has been $5,400. And for the past three years at DPW, uh, their costs have been just about $9,000 or just over $9,000. So uh, that total, if you, if you just look at the averages over the past few years, that total is just uh, shy of $15,000 or $14,500. So I think what I'd be asking for is that lump sum $10,000 amount uh, to defray what has to be fundraised to provide for town services to make town day happen um, and it's not it's not the most equal between what seems what the costs are but uh, if the committee was so inclined to recommend ten thousand dollars in town meeting passed it we'd probably defray the police costs by five thousand and the dpw costs by five thousand we're going to take them one at a time yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. so the dpw and the um, um, only complete. They don't factor this into the uh, into their regular budget. So historically, the town day fundraising has paid them. <coughs> so they've they've staffed it, and then they're reimbursed by the fundraising. Account. Have you asked them if they can factor in some of that? I so I can tell you they don't have extra overtime money to do it. If if we wanted to factor it in, I would say instead of doing it in a separate warrant article, we could consider bumping up their overtime accounts by these by these amounts. Either way, it would, it would come out, out of that part. Yeah. I mean, they don't have any money sitting anywhere that they can throw two or three thousand in either direction to help this. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> they can cut no. down on the paper so far. Is this overtime or detail? Yeah. Sure they do. Um, <laughs> well, I guess we probably call it a detail, but it's <coughs> paid at an overtime rate. I. The DPW costs are more in the setup. They set up the stage every year. So they buy new materials every three years for the stage. They put in a lot of hours uh, to, to build that stage. And that actually takes away from them doing what would otherwise be their normal DPW day jobs. And then they are there on town day as well, providing trash receptacles and keeping, keeping things clean. I, I mean, I think to some degree, this is a policy decision. Do, do we want this major town day town festival to have taxpayer support? In the <coughs> or not, you know, do we want it to be a fundraised festival? Uh, I don't mean to oversimplify it, but I, I think it's it's a policy decision to be made. Okay. Other questions or discussion? Dave? I don't know. How many police officers do they use now for town day? 
You know, I, I should have got that count. My guess would be it's got to be close to 8 or 10. Yeah, I, used, think, I think they have be, four at least at each end. It used to be 13 for Saturday, and and then it, then it changed. It was 13 for Friday night and 13 for Saturday Yeah. for different responsibilities. Yeah, it's a, it's, it's a lot. It's a, it's a big right. compliment to officers. Right. Well, one time, the one time they had less on Friday night, and and um, they realized they needed more personnel to cover different different areas, different responsibilities. But um, the rate is it's time and a half the individual officers' rate. It's not just a time and a half figure. So if you have somebody with an educational incentive, or if you have some somebody of rank. That, that amount goes up on, on, on both of them. Right. It's time and a half the individual offices um, pay. Okay, other questions or discussions? Dean? Oh, no. Oh, no, oh, you were just yawning. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, uh, Dick. When, when is Arlington the Live Festival? So Arlington Alive Festival is the, they, they call it a block party where they shut off Broadway Plaza and have music, vendors, food. Uh, I think it happens in June, I think June every, every year for the past three or four years. But I, I think the committee already made the decision to include that in that overall arts funding line item that was approved a few weeks ago. So I think that, that individual one's been taken off the table. Yeah, in other words, that was put in with the 25000 Yeah. Uh, for the uh, Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture. So that's the music part of the arts and culture. Okay, is there anybody? So David? Do they still have the display of American flags on Mass Ave? Or have they done away with that? We, I don't think we've done that since, since I've been here. I, my understanding is that Mr. Armstrong from Armstrong yeah. Ambulance donated used, for that. And he used to put up some. Yeah, and since he's passed, that's gone away. Well, it's in the article. So okay. do we? Oh, do we just not do it? Yeah, I, I don't. I have no recollection of it. Of it happening. Yeah, we haven't done it. In, I it's I been a while. It. Okay, so I should just cross it off the list of of the motion. And my other question is, on the Patriot State, how much money is allotted out of this? This group for Patriots State parade. Out of, oh, I, I, you know, I actually yeah, don't know the whole article. So Is it forty five hundred dollars? Uh, five thousand six hundred and sixty seven dollars. Fifty six hundred. Yeah. I'm not quite sure where that number ever came from, but yeah, that's that's the appropriation. For both Patriots State and Memorial Day celebration. Yeah, Patriots Day, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day. So do you want me to speak to Feast of the East quickly? Okay. Um, so any other questions on town day and their request? Okay, Feast of the East. So Feast of the East is put together by the Capitol Square Business Association down in East Arlington. Uh, they don't close off the street, but it generally runs from around the Capitol Theater block, across Lake Street down to, I think down as far as the um, the church at the corner of, a, it's not Marathon, what is that? Um, Amsden? Trinity, Trinity, Trinity Church, thank you. Uh, so and that, that also happens in uh, early summer. So I, I pulled those numbers today too. It looks like the combination of police details and DPW time is uh, only actually about twelve or thirteen hundred dollars uh, on average a year for that for that particular festival. Um, so I know I think I had asked for twenty five hundred dollars for that, but it, it actually seems like a smaller amount if uh, if, if approved, could still go a long way to cover costs, town costs associated with it. Okay, so uh, given your uh, review of the numbers, uh, the original request was for 2500 Would 15 cover it? Yeah, it seems like 15 would, would take care of it. Okay. Questions? Tom? I just have a problem given any money when it benefits all the business people down there and not the taxpayer. Unless everything's free down there, <coughs> which it isn't, that is solely to advertise the businesses. And I have a problem using our money for that, my opinion. Yeah, uh, may I? 
Yeah, I, I don't I don't disagree with that, but I, I think though Town Day is maybe more clearly town sponsored, <coughs> it really is the same thing, right? It's a it's it's a lot of tents with businesses. I mean, there's also town committees, so to be fair, it's a, it's a, maybe a better mix. There. I have a problem with Town Day too. But it, it's the same. It, it goes it comes back to that that it's policy. Just, it's just with this, a lot of things going on that we're, we're, we're throwing, we they're always asking for money now. These Arlington, these businesses. I mean, they make a lot of money. They can't cough up 1500 Shame on them. On a day like that, they gross pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good money. Yeah. Okay, are there any other questions or discussion? Peter? Would the uh, town day people be uh, willing to carry <coughs> on if the town picked up a part of the cost? I say it, would they be willing to carry the rest? Would they be willing to do the fundraising for the rest? Yeah, I, I think my, my understanding is that if the town was willing to, to appropriate really any sum of money, they're still very willing to, to fundraise for the remainder, but it would take a significant pressure off those fundraising plans. What percentage of the fundraising, let's call it 40,000, comes from uh, donations by businesses versus uh, the uh, the booth revenues. So uh, you know, I I don't I don't know that, but I'm I'm pretty sure it's almost all big bank sponsorships. That that's that's the majority of the revenue, and the the booth revenue is not insignificant, but I don't think it's the the majority. Okay, so if they didn't have the sponsorship, you know, couldn't have it. That's my understanding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, John, yeah. and Alan. Can we just um, go through this list and, and give us the, the requested amounts for, for each of these? Okay, items? so the Feast of the East requested amount is 1500 And the Town Day Celebration requested amount is 10000 And And for Patriot's Day and Memorial Day and Veterans Day? That's the same as it was before, 5667 Plus 4,500 for the flags. Yeah, 4,500 for uh, veterans flags. That's mandatory, if I remember correctly. Right, so I think the total is 21,667. Oh, 10,167. Okay. Well, why don't uh, why don't we just focus now on the uh, on those two? Any other discussion? Alan, a uh, question about the mechanics. If if we vote a total of 21,167, is uh, with with specific allocations in the recommendation are, are those sort of fixed or, or is there a, a pool of money that can be is a flexible appropriation out of that uh, we set them up as fixed accounts I mean I'm sure yeah. we could structure the vote to make them more fluid but I think Sandy correct me if I'm wrong I think that they're all set up as independent accounts in units, right yeah I mean at, at, at the bottom it says said something raised by general tax and expended under the direction of the town manager whereas the previous article is to be expended on the direction of the various committees and commissions. So it is a little different that way. Um, it sort of seems like we've been voting the same numbers for flags and parades for a long time. There has to be some inflation here. In the that, uh, if the money's unspent, what, what happened back to the general fund? Yeah. It's not a revolving fund. No, he, uh, I'm pretty sure the comptroller closes these out at the end of the year. I think he treats it as if it's a budget item. Okay, Tom? Are we voting these individually? Yes. Okay. Okay, any further discussions? Okay, so uh, why don't we ask the committee if they want to vote it now? Um, town Day? Why don't we vote them individually? What's the amount? I'm sorry, John. What's the amount? Uh, town day would be, well, the recommendation is for $10,000. I move $5,000. Second. Okay. Any further discussion? Uh, Grant? If, um, maybe even for the future, if people are concerned about the amount of uh, money that they've gotten for volunteer versus the amount of money that, that the town has to kick in, uh, perhaps some sort of matching device. 
whereas you know we would map the town might match. This is kind of like to address Tom's concern. The town might match a certain amount of whatever the businesses raise or something. Well, let's say it's uh, the twenty percent match. If the um, businesses raise eight thousand, the town would match two thousand. Yeah, but I think what they're saying is they raised in the range of forty thousand. Right. Well, I was just an example only, but it, it seems that some of the concern might be that the town kicks in to give them less incentive to raise money, and this might be a way to, um, to do that, or or not. That's your point. Any further discussion? Okay, the motion has been made and seconded for $5,000 for the Town Day celebration. All those in favor, please raise your hand. <coughs> Twelve. Opposed? Okay, so that passes 12 to 2. Uh, Feast of the East. Make a motion we don't allocate anything. Okay, so the motion on Feast of the Meat East is for no action. Is that seconded? Second. Okay, it's moved and seconded. Discussion? Charlie? Have we given any money to the Feast of the East before? I don't believe so. No. We haven't given it to Town Day either. Neither one of them. Okay, so uh, motions were made and seconded for no action on Feast of the East. All those in favor of no action, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Opposed to no action. Four. Okay, so uh, why don't we just uh, continue through placing of the flags, American flags on graves of veterans. Which just to remind you is a required <laughs> state requirement. So okay, move. Second? Second. Okay. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, so that's favorable action. Unanimous. Is there any reason to have display of American flags on Mass Ave even at zero? I mean, if somebody came up tomorrow and said, I'll pay for it. Uh, do, it. do we have a place that you could take, the selectmen could take that in and use it for that purpose? Yeah, we could establish a gift account to do that. Okay, so we don't need it in the no. code itself. Okay, uh, so the last one under this article is the Patriots Day Celebration, Veterans Day Parade, and Memorial Day Parade at 5,667. That's what we've voted for years. So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous with that. Okay, so that takes care of Article 46. Did we do uh, Alec and Alive? No, uh, that's in, we've already voted that under the Commission for the uh, Arts. That one got lumped into that. And you put Veterans Day in with the Patriots Day? And yeah, the, it's Patriots Day, Veterans Day, and Memorial Day all lumped in. Because one of them we actually have a parade. The other two, you know, sort of march from the uh, Walmart up to the Memorial, and, and that's it. So it's not a huge Alan? But I, I, I like Grant's idea of, of matching funds and under the auspices of expended at the direction of the town manager. I, I guess I personally would encourage the town manager to consider some sort of matching fund arrangement to encourage private fundraising. Yeah, I, may I? I, I like the idea to address that concern. Yeah, you, you want to keep some incentive in place that it's not necessarily maybe even replacing money, but supplementing money. So I like that. Okay. Now, Article 39, Appropriation Parking Operations Costs. Now, the memo, which I think will do it for some on the park, parking operating 
uh, district. Now, there's art also Article 26, uh, Parking Benefits District. So, let's go through this slowly. Uh, could you explain, for those who didn't have a chance to read this, uh, Article 26, the, uh, the purpose and what it does? Absolutely. So I'll, I'll walk through uh, the memo. I'm, I'm sorry for the two memos today. We caught a calculation error in the memo I sent out. That's what uh, caused the updated memo. So as the chair just mentioned, Warrant Article 26 would be the town voting to accept a new provision of state law that was passed as part of the Municipal Modernization Act last year. And this would be the adoption of MGL Chapter 40, Section 22A and a half, that would allow for the creation of a parking benefits district. And as I've laid out in here, what that basically is, is a geographically defined area, and we would define that as Arlington Center in the area where we have metered parking, where you can reinvest portions of the parking revenue into, as is laid out in the actual statute, improvements to the public <laughs> realm as well as transportation improvements, which include uh, both pedestrian and bike facilities. So the Board of Selectmen is actually the main motion on this because it's an adoption of state law article, and they voted favorably on Monday night uh, to move forward with adopting this parking benefits district. So I'll, I'll get into more detail as I talk about Article 39, but when we look at the whole parking program that we're recommending, we estimate that we could put near, well, at, estimating actually $150,000 annually that we could put towards this parking benefit district. So I would envision things as simple as um, a more frequent street cleaning, perhaps investing in some snow plowing, or more significant investments like bike racks, sidewalk improvements, or other more significant capital improvements. Uh, so that would be, that's the, that's the idea, concept, and statutory authority behind Parking benefits. Do you, want, do you want me to go into 39? You want to? Okay, so is there any questions on just that? John? Uh, you may get, get into this in 39, but is the, the $150,000 a year, is that the excess of meter revenues over operating costs? Or meters? Uh, thereabouts, yes. So that's the source of the funding. $150,000 is. is with we can take it because of the district. What's the district? So the district would be, they're, they're, it's kind of a quirky map, but um, I, I could provide you the map. It, it's, it's Arlington Center from Mill, basically to Franklin, where we have meters around the lot, so it goes down to Chestnut, up Medford. Uh, so it, it's generally what you'd consider to be the Arlington Center business district. Okay. Good. Would you consider putting any money into the so-called little common there? Oh, definitely. Yes. So we can have green grass and maybe some lights. You can tell about Whittemore Park, the uh, in front of the Jefferson Cutter House. No, back down to the center where the veterans sign is. Oh, that yes, area yes, is, yes. you know, I, I don't I'm not interested in the plowing. I'm interested if we're going to, if that's part of the district. I think our money needs to be. If we're trying to make Arlington, that is Arlington Center. East Arlington's not Arlington Center. That's Arlington Center. Yeah. We, we should at least take, that's a lot of money. Put a good chunk of money into looks, the landscaping. Yeah, I, 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 I wish you would come up with a, <clears throat> some type of plan. That would be nice. Can I, so, I, uh, two things I'll say. One, I, I think that area is sorely in, is in need of improvement. And over the past year, uh, led by the Planning Department and Public Works, we did a conceptual redesign of Mass Ave from Pond Lane, where the East Arlington Project ended, up to Mass Mill and Jason. Mm -hmm. And as part of that whole concept, we offered a concept that would really radically change Broadway Plaza, break out the through access as it is now, make mm -hmm. it a straight through access from Alton Street, and completely redesign the Veterans Memorial. So that's a little more long term. Uh, short term, I think we could do something. I will say, though, since you prompted it, I think the first capital improvement that the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee has been looking at for a long time and that a lot of the businesses have been looking at is that connection from Medford Street to the Russell Common parking lot by Arlington Catholic 
It's called Dormer Way. And it's behind the, uh, yeah. It's one of the, it's the main access from the parking lot to the business district. Yeah. And it's poorly lit. It looks very uninviting. The sidewalks it, are narrow. Do we own that or does Arlington Catholic? We own, we own the, the sidewalks and the right of way. As you get into the lot, the Arlington Catholic line yeah. cuts in a little bit, but we own enough right of way to do some things. Very well. Thank you. Okay, Grant. Um, is the differentiation between metered lot and the pay lots? Are they, are there any, like there's parking meters and there's also the lots where you, they have a machine where you pay. Correct. Um, uh, a little bit uh, confused about the difference. The um, parking area that we we're mentioning here, that's only the metered area and only the revenues from the meters? So or it, would it also include the revenue from the... We're talking about the lots, too. The lots as well. Okay. Total budget. All right, thank you. Charlie? <coughs> so uh, can you give us a summary of the current revenues from the, uh, from the Russell Common Lot? Yeah, so can, can I jump into the whole, uh, I, I want yeah, to jump into the whole the revenue? Year. Well, let me, let me answer that. So the Russell Common Law, historically, before we put the new meters in, collected about um, somewhere between maybe sixty-five and $80,000 a year, depending on how often they were, they were operational. Uh, we're now projecting uh, the monthly, since we put the new kiosks in the lot, we're projecting that they'll take in about $125,000. What are you forecasting for the meters along um, Mass Avenue? Meters that so our forecast for that, based on the first three or so months of collection, it's actually less than when I sat with you all in October to talk about it. We're forecasting uh, approximately three hundred thousand dollars for those meters. It's that fifteen minutes thing, huh? It is. That's actually it's a great. I think it's a great offering, but it's costly. I, yeah, I do. So, so the total um, parking revenue, excluding tickets, is uh, $425,000? Correct. And it, that's excluding tickets and permits. How about the lot, the, uh, the railroad lot, the lot behind Joe's? Uh, I'm, you know what, I'm sorry. That, that's included in that $125,000 figure. Okay. There, we, we, we count those together. Okay, uh, question, uh, Paul. Um, what's wrong with what we have? The parking money comes in, goes into the general fund. The capital planning committee plans how to spend things on capital expenses, and town meeting approves expenditures, and that seems to work now, doesn't it? I, I would argue that that's not how this would work because the capital plan can spend up to 5% of general fund revenue for any calendar year or fiscal year. So they would be able to put 5% of $300,000 in new revenue towards improvements to the parking district. So they would be able to spend $15,000 a year on an investment in the parking district or the business district as opposed to $150,000 a year. So I, I actually don't see it the same way. Um. Can't the Capital Planning Committee and, and then town meeting in, invest any amount on, you know, they can choose not, not, we can choose not to spend it on some capital project and instead to spend it on a capital project that has to do with the parking or the, or the things going on in that uh, parking district. Well, uh, I'll continue to push back. I mean, the capital planning, the capital budget is always at or near capacity. So adding new revenue to the general fund, about 65% will go directly to the schools, say 30% will go to uh, other, uh, the town, and you know some adjustment for fixed costs in there, and then you only get that 5% adjustment to the capital budget. So they, there's certainly the discretion to make an investment in the, in the Arlington Center area as part of the capital budget, but it's not accurate to depict this new revenue as dramatically enhancing the ability of the capital budget to be reinvested in Arlington Center. What was the revenue before parking meters when it was just the two lots? So that we, we would budget annually for permits, lots, and 
permits, lots, and violations, uh, 490000 a year. So you don't know what the lots themselves were uh, The lots were before, it was, so with the, the more faulty meters, they were between sixty-five, eighty-five thousand dollars $85,000 a year. And that's closer to 130000 right? So okay. Uh, are you finished? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, Al. Uh, how is the hundred fifty thousand appropriated? Who recommends it? So right now, the the DOR, and I'll jump ahead a little bit. The DOR, Department of Revenue's interpretation of twenty two A, which is the larger parking operating costs article, is that uh, acquisition, installation, maintenance, and operations of meters costs don't have to be appro appropriated and can be taken from that fund. Uh, but I would want to bring it before the Finance Committee and Town Meeting for endorsement every year. The Parking Benefit District, they're not clearly ruling on whether or not it needs to be appropriated. Uh, so uh, our, the comptrollers and myself and the deputies' interpretation is that we would treat it the same as the Parking Operating District, but certainly if they ever wanted it to be appropriated, we would do so. I'm just wondering if it's a choice between improvements to the park versus a snowplow. Those are, can be tricky decisions. I'm wondering who makes recommendations. What, what is there a public process to appropriate from the 150,000? Yeah, we, so I envision the Parking Implementation and Governance Committee, which is a publicly posted meeting, being the body that governs this, taking input from the Arlington Center merchants. Nope. Uh, that was my question. Sorry. That was my question, actually. Oh, okay. Charlie? So, um, I, I two, two parts to the question. First of all, um, do you envision that we'll eventually have parking meters in Arlington Heights and East Arlington? I would say, I think when, if we're successful in approving a parking benefits district and we start reinvesting parking revenue in Arlington Center, that merchants and residents in the Heights and the East would start to see the benefit of it. That said, I think the whole system in Arlington Center makes sense from a policy point of view because we have the lots. So we can price on the street for turnover and price the lots for longer term stays. We don't have that luxury in the Heights or the East. So that's a long winded answer to say, I, I think we will eventually get there, but it's not as obvious to me because we don't have that same ecosystem of parking. So the answer is, I think, that we will eventually have parking meters in the Heights and the East. I, I'd, I'd say, I think, I would predict eventually. Okay. Um, can, can you differentiate for me why the parking meter revenues should be uh, essentially sequestered from other revenues that the town has? What, in other words, why, why are the parking meters uh, different I don't, I don't know. There are all sorts of, there are all sorts of uh, local receipts that we get yeah. that are in the budget. Okay. And, and we don't differentiate them uh, to a direct purpose. And we've always managed to uh, you know, pay for the enforcement of the parking rule and we've always yeah. managed to pay for the meters and whatever. What, what is so different about this particular uh, process that you're proposing? So I would argue that we actually, we have a program now. And we have program revenues and we have program costs. And in this particular case, there's a statutory ability to treat it as a program and have the funds go into one place and be expended out of that one place. So the breakdown, the breakdown has, um, and I'll, I'll point to the, the, the back side of the memo. So the breakdown has all the expenses, including the parking benefit district expenses and what our anticipated revenue would be from both the single and multi-space meters. And I'd call that a program. So we're, we're trying to run a program that's near balanced. So you could even, it's not an enterprise fund, but you could think about it like an enterprise fund. Um, we still do have general parking costs because those parking. Can I ask the question? Yes, sure. it, you, you know, you make reference to an enterprise fund. In an enterprise fund, the users pay fees for the benefits that they get. Correct. Okay. Here, the users are paying fees, but the benefit, it's not clear to me that the, the money you're spending is going back to the to the to the taxpayers or the people who are paying those fees. They're going someplace else, right? If a command, 
if, if improving a sidewalk, better lighting a stretch of roadway, uh, beautifying a monument to, to veterans, clearing sidewalks of snow, putting hanging flower baskets, is it a benefit to the taxpayer? No, not, not, not at the level of which this might allow us to do. But that, that all goes to the benefit of the taxpayer. Well, I, don't understand, I can't imagine who else it would benefit if not the taxpayer. Well, it looks to me like it, what you said before is directed to the merchants, not to the taxpayers. I will. I mean, I won't disagree that the, the merchants certainly get a benefit from having a, a, an improved infrastructure in the area, but the residents who access it do as well. Other questions, Paul? Um, the the share of money for parking enforcement um, the, you talk about uh, re related to the police budget does this mean if if this passes we should add an offset to the police budget for the fifty six thousand four hundred and thirty nine dollars yes yeah, so I um, <coughs> Sandy and I started talking about that along with the comptroller today and I think we would represent it as an offset to the general fund and have a taxation total as is represented in the budget book this year as with other general offsets. And the idea behind that is there are, there are still non-meter based parking costs. There's the permit plan uh, program, there are violations being written in the Heights and in the East based on time violations. So there are costs that at least today should still be borne in my opinion by the general fund. So I think what we're proposing here reduces overall general fund impact of parking management uh, and based on putting receipts from violation revenue as we projected today and permit revenue are actually still increasing how much we put into the general fund based on a, as a from a local receipt point of view. So I don't know how we would do it in this year's budget or well I, I had suggested to the manager and uh, that we just Alan had a another offset line to each of those budgets would be <laughs> what's, what's another one? Except, that, except yeah. that if this Not doesn't if pass, if this doesn't pass, then we don't want the offsets. No. So um, it can be adjusted. You know, we have to So I mean, we, we can figure out how to how to best do it so it's the most transparent. We shouldn't let the mechanics stand in the way of policy. Okay, Alan. Uh, so are we, are we on to Article Thirty Nine, or is that? I have questions yeah, about I the expenditures. I'm sorry? I have questions about the expenditure call. Okay, here. go. Okay. Uh, uh, two questions. Uh, you know, one is the one that stands up the single space leasing payment for 46000 as opposed to 6000 like, What is that? So the uh, single space leasing payment is what we pay the firm that we uh, acquired the, the on street meters and did the install. So that, that's the annual, that's the five year lease agreement for the acquisition and installation of the street meters. Lease purchase. Okay. We're, we're talking about the, the forty-six thousand five sixty-one. Yes. Okay. It's a funny label. Um, second, is, is there is there money in here for repair and replacement? Of, you know, eventually, eventual replacement of the meters, and and, and and where that leading is, should some of the surplus be set aside for replacements? Because yeah. I, I don't know what the life of a parking meter is. Yeah, I think. I do have that in there, and I'm not recalling which line that I lumped it into. Um, What's the life of a parking meter? What's the life of the parking meter is probably five or six years, and we, est the, the firm that sold them to us estimated that we probably need five or ten grand a year to replace batteries and parts. So it's, it's not a huge sum. But why not replace the whole meter? What's it going to cost to keep them to keep them running? I just want to make sure that's covered. In so what you would do is at the end of the lease, like leasing a car, you would probably engage in another lease to purchase, and you'd have a similar <coughs> annual cost as you see in this budget here. Does that make sense? Well, I just, I, okay, I just want to make sure that in, in this there is money to continually replace the meters, that there's not an additional appropriation five years down the road to replace the meters. Yeah, no, I have, I have, a, I have accounted for that, but I, what I would guess will happen here is these meters will last a year or two past that five-year period, and then we'll need to think about a wholesale replacement of them. 
and since that lease payment will have expired by then, th there still will be revenue to be able to once again do that replacement if necessary. So there's no additional appropriation to replace meters. You wouldn't expect an additional appropriation. Not a, well, if we end up adopting this model, no. Okay, because okay, so the the forty six thousand, that's sort of the annual capital cost. Yeah. And if we had purchased these, that would be the debt service. Yeah, that's cost effective. in yeah. effect. Yeah. Okay, Alan. Okay. Charlie? So can you take us down this list, Adam, and just explain the items um, that you have listed here? Yeah, uh, <coughs> I, the, uh, through the spreadsheet? Yeah, this yeah, little yeah, yeah, thank you. So uh, the IPS, and I'm sorry, I, I don't know why I abbreviated that. That's uh, IPS is the meter company, uh, and that's their credit card fee, so that's the, uh, the per transaction fee they charge us for processing uh, from the meter end. Elevon, credit card fee. That's the actual credit card processing company that processes the payment, so that's their fee, that's their transaction fee. Uh, the monthly gateway data fee is uh, the payment we make for the backend software that manages the, uh, manages the meters. The monthly management system fee is also related to our payments to the parking vendor for accessing, accessing their whole parking management system. Coin collection, I think is self-explanatory. Uh, single space first parish lease. These are the spaces directly across the sh uh, street, or from directly across Peck Spangler Way from the entrance to the library. They belong <coughs> to uh, First Parish. We are leasing them from the parish. Uh, they, they always let the town use them for library spaces, and they're now leasing them to us, and um, we're, we're paying them $500 a month lease, and we're collecting about $1,000 a month or $12,000 a year uh, in those actual on those meters. Uh, the lease payment is, as we just discussed, that's the annual lease payment for the acquisition and installation of the meters themselves. That'll be paid out over the course of five fiscal years. The share of parking enforcement is 50% of the parking control officer's salaries. And the share of parking administration is 50% of the administrative salaries uh, contained within the current general fund parking budget. And then, again, clearly labeled as the uh, share of the parking benefit district, as we discussed earlier, of one hundred fifty thousand dollars. So that is, what does that mean? The share of the parking benefit district. <coughs> I frankly admit that I think I kept share in when I had this document structured in a different way, and I think it should just say parking benefit district. So, one hundred fifty thousand dollars is a discretionary expenditure without a target, basically. <coughs> I, would, I wouldn't say it's without a target. It's without a defined target today. And uh, whatever we would spend it on, I'd be fully committed, if it was operationally related, to have it be endorsed by the Finance Committee before it was expended. And if it was capital related, to have it go before the Capital Planning Committee. So I wouldn't want to make it sound like it's just free, free money flying around without public discussion. Free money flying around with public position. Fair okay. enough. Fair enough. So, um, and then the difference between the four hundred fourteen thousand and the four hundred twenty-five is 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 a safety margin or something? Yeah, I mean, I I, I chose to not try to plug it artificially. Uh, that th those those are our projections as they as they are there. So, if we took, I'm sorry, you finished? Sure? No. Okay, go ahead. Uh, last fall, uh, when you presented this to the special town meeting. I thought that you had a revenue, I didn't bring the sheet paper with me, thank you. you had a revenue statement that said something like 400000 to $900,000, do I recall yeah, that? Yeah, I thought it was 750 to 400000 or 475 or something yeah. in that range. So at that point, the-, the, the and That was only for the meters, that wasn't for the existing- That was just the single space meters. That's right. right. So I had said in that chart that we had 225 meters, um, I was mistaken. We have 109 <coughs> meters, so there's significantly less meters. And they, uh, the other thing we were not contemplating at that time was the first 15 minutes free. So that is, I guess I'd say, significantly reduced revenue as well. So there's been a couple. What, what, one was a mistaken number of meters, and the other was that policy change. So we went to, so, so we we're actually we're actually looking for these new meters to produce how much incremental income specifically? 
How much new money? Yeah, three three hundred thousand. Yeah, so you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah. talking about just revenue, not, not profit. Just revenue, yeah. I'm just trying to find out where that number is. Um, Plus 125? Yeah, it is there. Yeah, it, it, it's, not, it's not specified. Plus 125 from the blocks and 300 from the street meters. Yeah. It isn't broken down in the Okay, so, so, so this is, okay, so 425 is, 125 from the from the lots, the lot meters, yes, correct. lot meters, and um, and 300 from the new meters, correct. Okay. So, um, so to actually the cost of the cost of the new system. Basically, everything above, hmm. including single space first parish lease and above, is the cost of the new system. I think you'd have to add the 46. Yeah, I think you have to. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, you have to add the 46. Okay. So it's 46 up. So can you give us a total of that? Well, we can. It's uh, 150, so it's, uh, it's $160,000. Yeah. Right? Something yeah. like that. And the experience with the first several months of the new meters is that we will reach uh, three hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, they, they have seemed to be pretty consistent Monday through Saturday, collecting just about eleven $1 hundred dollars a day. Okay, thank you. So that the what was call it 160,000 from the 46 on up. That will go into the parking expenditure fund that we, that would have gone into the parking expenditure fund that was created last fall. The 46, yes, right. that, yeah, that's already happening. Yes. Okay, so what we're dealing with the uh, district or the new stuff is the share of the uh, administration and enforcement of the 58 and the 45 and then the parking benefit district. So those three numbers, uh, part of which the 58 and the 45, you suggested that we could use that money for increase the snow and ice budget, and the 150 would be set aside uh, for work in the uh, district. Correct. Okay, other questions? Christine, whoa, okay. Christine, Tom, Grant, Peter, Charlie. Adam, you're, I just want to make clear that you're proposing to add this to the snow and ice budget on top of the 946. <coughs> that, that, that was my proposal, already. yeah. I, I felt it was, in making that recommendation, I felt that was in conformance with prior discussions here at Finance Committee about trying to get up to the 10-year the average of snow and ice expenditures for our actual appropriation of <coughs> I hear you spent some money yesterday. <laughs> okay, Christina, you? Okay, uh, Tom? You probably told me this, Adam, or said it to us. Who's the government back at the end of the day where this money is going to be spent? Um, I would say the final deciding factor, I don't think I would, I wouldn't want to spend capital money without the Capital Planning Committee voting on it. And I wouldn't want to actually spend operating money without finance committee voting. So this chunk of money, you, you would come up with a plan, let's say, yeah, and then you would go to capital planning and then come to the finance committee and we'd give our opinion. I, I absolutely would do that. And if you take some of that money and you put it in the snow and ice, are you confident that we will see the difference at Arlington South? Yeah, I mean, I think we, we would have to. And I mean, to be specific, you know, right away, sort of the way luck goes, we put in 
meters, and two months later, we get 25 inches of snow in three days, and people can't get to the meters. So, I mean, I think we would have to think about putting some kind of program in place that uh, just for the just for the no, sustainability system. No, I, I agree, system, but are you, we can get, get through. I, it, that's fine, but I, I'd like to see. I want to see it. Yeah, because we have a history of it's not. We don't see it. It just goes some more overtime for other sections of town. Yeah, I mean, I think based on existing resources and DPWs uh, and at. Um, in effort like what we're talking about, we'd have to contract it out. Okay. That's good. I like that answer. Thank you. Okay, uh, Frank. Adam, um, what happens if, uh, you know, the car runs and knocks over three meters? Is there an insurance policy to replace them, or is that uncovered? And how does, what happens? It's, so it's not wear and tear. It's uh, <laughs> destruction. Uh, so that already happened. Uh, before they even went on, someone knocked over. A pole with one of the meters on when they still had, they still had <laughs> bags over them. <laughs> so um, we would certainly uh, go after the, <coughs> the driver's insurance oh. policy for the damage, um, but any anything that would fall to the town, we would uh, we we would we would take out of this uh, take out of you know available reserves in this balance, okay. which there so there is a little bit there. Be part of the parking benefit. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay, Peter. Um. <coughs> I guess you could su suggest that this is a uh, benefit for the, the, s the central business district. So yeah, far. I agree. Um, so perhaps the uh, owners of those, uh, I mean, the people running the businesses could expect to get more foot traffic and more revenue. Any estimates of what that might be? You know, I've. Whether, whether it be from a event-based foot traffic or, or improvements to the public realm, I, I, I've struggled with find, to find a good metric uh, for that. I think the best thing I can say is, um, this is outside of the revenue part, but more the programmatic part, these meters seem to have absolutely increased availability and turnover on the street, which <coughs> I could almost guarantee means people are parking more and shopping more because they're finding an easier time to park. So I think from a, easier to say from a programmatic point of view, it's working to help businesses. I think it'd be harder to pinpoint that better sidewalks, better lighting would, you know, hard to quantify, I shouldn't say pinpoint, quantify would be the challenge. Okay, <coughs> Is there any chance this will have any effect on the empty storefront issue? You know, I would, I think some of those, as I, I think we've talked about, for, I think with this committee we've talked about before, some of those I think are very landlord based. Uh, but I do think that parking availability and better infrastructure in a business center would certainly lead to better tenancy uh, in, in the biggest storefronts. So, so Adam and Sandy, um, I hate to be a pessimist, but I think this is, um, I'm confused by the accounting, we put it that way. Um, you were saying that we have annual revenue of 425000 to pay for these expenditures, but we don't. We're only getting new revenues of $300,000. $125,000 at least is our existing revenue stream coming into the general fund. So in fact, what you're proposing here is spending $414,000 on a new revenue stream of $300,000. So the impact on the general fund is at least a negative $114,000, that's, that's not a benefit to the town. It's, it's, it's a cost because you're reducing general revenue income that we already had. You're counting it twice, basically. So I don't, I don't think we're counting it twice. I think so what's not been made explicit here is through the implementation of the meters, violation revenue has gone up. And that's what is allowing us to say. So it used to be. 490 that went into the general fund, now it will be 540 because violation revenue has gone up. While at the same time, we've increased revenues from the parking meters by 300,000 that we'll be able to combine with the multi-space meters and pay those $414,000 worth of cost. But we're doing that at the same time as still putting more into the general fund. I mean, our, our total I'm sorry, projected- I'm, I'm not so fast as to assimilate all those numbers in one okay. shot. Yeah, no, I, I, I try, try, very very basically, it just seems to me what you've done in this paper is you're counting revenue 
that we have in the general fund as new income. And the only way we can do that is take it out of the general fund. No, I think I think what you're saying what you're saying is accurate, but misses that violation revenue is going up and that's being proposed to go into the general fund to offset what we're shifting to this fund. And, and Charlie, you're not thinking the 414 is entirely from single space meters. That also includes the bonus. So it, it, even without the single space meters, I don't know what part of that 414 would still be spent, but some of it. No, I'm saying that the we have a proposal here that we're, <coughs> we're spending $414,000, including $150,000. Look at it, look at the other way. A different way of looking at it is, if you took this hundred fifty thousand dollars out, okay, then you would be starting to get close to some sort of a break even on the on the cost and the income. But we we're, we're we're saying we've got one hundred twenty five thousand dollars that we're taking out out of our existing revenues that go into the parking budget or whatever you want to call it, the, you know, the parking uh, fund. And now we're putting it into this district, and when, then we're saying it's a benefit because we're spending four hundred fourteen thousand dollars. Right, but I'm saying the fourteen would the four fourteen wouldn't go to zero without without the single space meters. There'd still be maintenance on the lots, on the two the two multi space lots. I, I don't know if it's a third of no, that. Tell so where is that? <clears throat> Well, it says at the top single and multi-space meter, so I assume these costs are for both. I mean, we already are accounting. We're already accounting for the maintenance on the lots, and, and that's in here, and, and that's the that's the offset. Right. I don't know. I don't know where well, it's can right. I, Charlie? Can I? Let me try. Well, I think what Charlie's saying, and I can articulate it with the old handout. And so in October, we were told that parking meter revenue would be a low of 421, a high of 716. We would have all these expenses that would be paid for out of the low of 421 and the high of 716. This sheet has the expenses, but the revenue is not in that 421 to 715 range. So to fund these expenses, there's a change from the fall where $125,000 of existing revenue is being moved into the revolving fund exactly. to pay for it. That's what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, and I don't think you should use the 414 exactly because the share of parking enforcement and share of parking administration right now are coming from the general fund um, and instead they'll be offset here. So you should subtract $100,000 from the 414. And you subtract 125000 from the... Right. You, there's still a thing, but it, it comes out to... 314,000 essentially here. Um, and so the 300,000 new. But they, but this, but this process has to pay some, has going to have some enforcement costs and some administration, administrative costs. I don't know what it is. But I, I, I mean, I just think the accounting here is, is a little bit um, loose. Okay. You're, you're certainly, well, the enforcement. It, is there additional enforcement with the meters that there wasn't before when there were two-hour parking places that had to be enforced? So more tickets are, we have not increased enforcement costs, but more tickets are being written. Okay, so, so as far as, as the enforcement number, that's the same before and after the meters. The, the enforcement revenue is going up. And the enforcement yeah. revenue is going up. The, the parking administration, is that more, is, is the total parking administration more with the meters than it was with just the two hour? It's currently the same. Um, and the cost of the kiosks in the lots, is that included in this, in these numbers? The cost to operate them? Yeah. Yes. Um, the cost to <coughs> pay for it originally, or they had been previously purchased two, two years ago with a capital expenditure. Okay. Now, John, and you may have already told us this, but what is the amount, the increase in the uh, enforcement revenue? 
like approximately yeah about fifty thousand dollars more than we had uh, budgeted in the past okay i'm sorry that was for the violation violation okay so what a violation uh revenues been before annually we um we budgeted uh Estimated two hundred eighty-five thousand. That's just violations. Correct. And that money is going into the general fund. And how much do you expect it to be the first full year after everything is in? Uh, I haven't projected an, an, an so, so so that, so that's good. Now this is the budget number. And um, so we're we're estimating that once. For a full year current system, four hundred thousand dollars. Looks like the FY seventeen budget was two eighty five. In past years, we budgeted a higher. Budget. Okay, so you're expecting that that the violation money will be approximately four hundred thousand town wide, including in the district. And we've budgeted four hundred. Are you uh, budgeted four hundred ninety thousand for general fund revenues total? So. How do we restore that up to the, where's that ni extra 90,000 coming from? So permit revenues, and that's permits in both the Russell Common lot, railroad lot, and across town in over, uh, overnight parking and school lots uh, add up to $140,000. Okay, so before we had $490,000 uh, in our estimated receipts to the general fund, and after this is fully implemented between 400,000 violations and 140,000 permits, so 540,000, that will all go to the general fund. Correct. So the general fund will get an increase of 50,000. Is that? John? Yeah, maybe I'm not getting that. You said that you're estimating for a full year $400,000 for enforcement revenue. Yes. And we previously budgeted 285. So that sounds like $115,000 new revenues as a result of the meters. So if we if we take out the 125,000 that you showed your under annual revenue, which is coming from the lots, and we substitute in the 115,000 new enforcement revenue associated with meters, then we're at annual revenue of $415,000, which is, which would cover what you're showing here for annual expenses, including the 150000 for the parking benefit district, with no effect on the general fund. That. Am I getting that correctly, or am I, I, I missing something? I, I think the parking violations have historically have been about three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Well, we budgeted a map, and then what's that's the actuals that have come in, so those are different. <coughs> what would the actuals would count? Well, uh, it depends on what what your for what purposes. <laughs> so it depends on. We, we need to get 285 to keep the balanced budget. That's so that's one one of my hats as keeping a balanced budget in terms of how much free cash we get. The other is relevant. Grant, how much increase in permits from? Has there been any increase in the permit revenue from last no, year? Per permits are fairly fairly steady. There's really been no change to the permit program. So I see a following Charlie that was sort of moving 125 from the lots, moving that out of the general fund and directing it here, 
and are only moving back into the general fund, the increase in the um, uh, parking violations of 50,000. So general fund is taking a hit of... But, and the offsets. Oh, and, right. So. Right, but that's not on the revenue side. Right, but the net change. Oh, and that's the uh, the two the two fees make up the difference. Part of it. Okay, Charlie and then Adam. So, um, Adam, is there any time limit on when these um, when this law could be accepted? So the um, the parking operating law was already accepted in October. No, I, I so, yeah, no, the parking benefit district can be accepted any time. Yeah. Yep. So why don't we wait a year? see what the numbers really turn out to be. So, I, I mean, I'll say we, we the, the Board of Selectmen, myself, other town staff and volunteers have really sold to the entire community this whole parking program based upon our efforts to establish a parking benefits district when legally allowable. That's what I'm going to a question. I, I'd like to have two things included in the vote. One is, instead of 150,000 that, that it'd be some, you know, call it surplus or some percentage of the surplus, a number that would be some related to the difference between cost and expenses, that that could be in the vote. And the second one is a more open appropriation process. I'm thinking something like CDBG or CPA, where the committee would come to town meeting with a, a proposed appropriation, which could be counted <coughs> with, a, with a, uh, uh, an alternative motion. And, uh, could those be mechanically acceptable in a vote? You know, the, the, the number based on surplus and the appropriation subject to town meeting approval based on the recommendation of the committee. Yeah, I, so Sandy's saying, I, I, we, we, DOR is saying it's not subject to appropriation, but I don't think there's any legal limitation on making it, you know, us committing and saying it's subject to town meeting approval. I'm, I'm fine with that. I, because I, I think it's good to be able to, the parking meters are an inconvenience for a lot of people, and to be able to show a direct benefit as opposed to 150000 going into the general fund that they lost. You know, and you could say, oh, that money bought these flowers and this snow plow and these lights on the, you know, Veterans Memorial, things like that. It's a, it's a direct exchange for the inconvenience. But I think it should be a public process instead of just a backroom committee making a decision. Yep. Yeah, I, 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 I agree with that, and I'll say, Maybe I should have led with this. I didn't invent the concept of a parking benefit district. This is a nationally accepted concept that's being done across the country to reinvest parking revenues in the business district where the parking meters are located. Massachusetts has actually been behind the curve in adopting this legislation to allow them. So I, I, I love the idea. I think it's a brilliant idea. I think it's, I think it's innovative local government at its best. So I, I hope my passion has come through as just passion and not any, anything but that tonight. But um, I mean, I wish I could take credit, but I, I don't want anybody to think that, you know, me or someone sitting in town hall dreamed up this Ponzi scheme to, to take parking revenues. This is, this is, again, a nationally established model to reinvest in public infrastructure based on the collection of, of parking revenues while meeting the parking goal of creating availability in the business area. Now, um, you know, I'm, I'm sort of looking out at you reading your minds, and I'm not sure uh, how comfortable everybody is. What we could do is, since I still think there's some questions <coughs> and, and numbers that, that people might want to see, is that um, you know, we could assign this for discussion and vote next Wednesday, uh, which is a clear day. That would allow both the manager's office and individual members to, to exchange information Perhaps put the numbers back in so you can show a direct walkthrough from how it's treated now to how it would be treated under this, uh, and uh, maybe get that back to us by uh, you know Monday if possible. I think it's just reworking some of the numbers, and maybe get people uh, a, a chance to ask additional questions that you might have uh, coming out of this, just so it's it's clear. It would, it would seem to me you've got two elements here. Article 39 is to appropriate for operating costs. 
which would involve the 46,561 up. So that would all have to be delineated out here. Um, and then if the committee feels uh, with the other, then uh, two offsets and an appropriation into the district um, you know, could be attached to that. So it might be good if we actually saw a vote. Yeah, I can uh, do that. Okay. Um, so that would be my suggestion. And that way, hopefully, clear off any of the questions that might have. On the other hand, if everybody wants to just go ahead and do it, you know, or not do it, we, we could discuss and do it now. But I, I think if this is going to be confusing to us who have looked at this a little bit, it will be really confusing to town meeting. Uh, so I think we need to have it uh, in our mind. So uh, does that sound reasonable? Okay. Uh, then what I ask the individual members to do is if you have specific questions, shoot them to the manager, uh, hopefully tomorrow, and then I'd ask the manager, could you uh, get back another memo to us? I know you love writing memos to us. Uh, and that especially looks at the revenue stream today Crosswalk and follow that through. Um, and I, I, you know, uh, I know we have budgeted and we have actuals, but you know, um, you know, maybe I suppose you could show them both if you wanted to. Uh, maybe a list of specific things that the the 150,000 could do, uh, not specifically, but to do it, and have uh, town council draft up an article. Uh, maybe specifically, and furthermore, the the town meeting shall. Uh, you know, present this budget to town meeting uh, for their approval uh, each year or something like that. I, I think that would be most transparent. Does that sound like a reasonable yeah. course of action? Yeah. So everybody has to come in here Wednesday at 7.30 prepared to discuss and vote on, uh, on this issue. Okay. Uh, and, and don't be shy. Don't come up with a question next Wednesday. <laughs> uh, uh, but tr try to get them to the manager's office, either Sandy or Adam, uh, by tomorrow if possible. And then maybe once you get the materials on Monday, you know, uh, ask questions at that point. Okay? Uh, Dean. Just as I, uh, an ironic aside to anyone that's been around for a while, is. Um, 2005 article 31 was extremely similar to this it was proposed by the um, by mr. 2000 Gilligan. 2005 mr. Gilligan had proposed something very similar to this that we're looking at right now oh, interesting except he obviously didn't have parking meters he was talking about the, the lots yeah. would this be clearer yeah. if, if instead of creating the parking uh, district to just create an enterprise fund like we have all the other enterprise funds and lay it all out and if there's capital that has you know that that becomes part of the uh you phase two or section two of the capital budget and do it that way is there any reason that the parking unit would be better than that um i don't know i, mean, I think it would all look the same as what we're talking about now we'd just be calling it by a different name but let we, why don't we look at that when we put everything together? Okay. Just a suggestion. But I think whichever, I think the committee wants it, you know, for town meeting to see each year. Great. Okay. Uh, while you have them here, is there any other questions for the town manager? How much money did we spend yesterday? So I don't, I, I don't have that figure yet, but I talked to the director this morning and so the last time I reported to the committee, we were just about $300,000 over the FY17 budget. And our estimate would be, in terms of the, the, the storm before yesterday, uh, which I think was Friday at this point, plus this storm, it's probably, uh, and salt purchases, it's probably another three dollars to $400,000. So we're probably somewhere in the vicinity of being six to $700,000 over the FY17 snow and ice budget. Sorry, what was that? So probably somewhere between six to seven hundred thousand dollars over the FY seven. Good thing you increased the uh, budget, <laughs> or suggested that we do. Okay, Dave. Just remember, uh, as a reminder, is, is, did we adopt? I thought the Municipal Modernization Act had a provision that, that didn't require you to come back here 
like over and over again. I, yeah, I don't. I, I, you no longer. I, it's now subject to the town manager, the chief executive officer's approval, not the finance committee's. Okay. But I'm still keeping. I still I send the memos as I get them. I'm not trying to not share the information. But. You're not going to get a complaint done for me. <laughs> nice to keep people safe. Yeah. Okay, Liz. In the uh, next Wednesday's agenda, could you ask discussion of uh, uh, parking meter fund? Article 39. Just insert that and then budget review. Okay. So uh, can I, can I, I will say so my soon expected child is due on the 25th, so there's a chance that Sandy will be sitting in, in this chair making this argument next week, depending on how things go. So okay. Be ready. Where's your sense of priority? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see. Okay. Uh, well, actually, you know, this might be at this point uh, just straight policy issue discussion if everybody's satisfied with the numbers yeah. um, on that. But uh, we understand. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now you're welcome to stay for a little while if you'd like, but if you'd like to go home, that would be okay too. I was going to say, I got to teach Kathy Bodie to get up fast when she's let out. <laughs> she lingered for one second and three questions came after that. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Take care. Have a good night. Okay, what I'd like to do now, if you want to pull out your warrant, is see there's a few things here that I, I want to just uh, knock out of the way. Uh, Article 32 is position reclassification. That's from Carolyn. Uh, so uh, I will call her and make sure she's ready by next Wednesday. Town budgets we're doing, capital budget is done. Uh, rescission article 35 is done. Bond premium 36 is done. 37 public art is done. Recodification is done. Article 39, we will do that on Wednesday. Article 40 is done, we just voted that today. Uh, Revaluation. I think Charlie, you're we're going to take that in when you came in with the assessors. Uh, yes, that's uh, Brian. He's okay. We will, we will take it. Is we'll it. Bill, is that your budget? Yeah, it's your budget, right? The assessors. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Are so, you? Are, when are you ready to do the uh, Article 41? Uh, either one's your uh, one year one, Steve. Okay. If you if you could shoot for Wednesday. Just going into the school committee meeting she takes most well, of the night, but I think that once it would be better because I think we had planned on the insurance but the insurance budget on Monday as well. Okay. Is that still on? Uh hopefully. Okay. So uh aim for Wednesday. Well I want to make Wednesday a very you know full meeting. Okay, uh forty two is done on sewer, forty three is done on water. 44 is Minuteman, that's done. Okay, Article 45 is the committees and commissions. Now, okay, uh, let's, we can do these, uh, why don't we do them separately? So the first one is the Arlington Historic Commission, 2160, that's the same amount we've been appropriating for them. Uh, I don't know, for the last several years, it's not being increased. Do I have a motion on that? Absolutely. Second? Second. Okay, any questions? What's the number? $2,160. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. The Arlington District Commissions. Now this is what the... What about the recycling you know Yeah, okay. That further down. Uh, B is uh, Historic District Commissions. This is like Avon, Broadway, Jason, Russell, Pleasant Street, Mount Goboa. I think there's one or two others. So that's 5,100. That's not changed in the last several years. They don't want an increase. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second? Second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, that's Mr. done. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Okay, 
Yes, Dean, could we? I mean, if they, can you just to move along with this, could we just read everyone who doesn't want more money as one and vote them? Or do we have to go through them all? Okay. Okay, then let me go through those. C, Capital Plan Committee is zero. Uh, Commission on Disability is 3,000. Recycling Committee is 3,000. Human Rights Commission is 4,500. Arlington Tourism is 4,275. Vision 2020 is 3,800. Transportation Advisory Committee is zero. So all those are the same as they were last year. Nobody's asked for any additional money. Now, does anybody want to take any of those separately? Does, do I have a motion to take all those together as I delineated? Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any questions? So it's all those for the same amounts as prior year. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Now, J is the byway. We've already done that, the scenic byway for 2000. We've already voted that. Now, here's how I did K. Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, 25,000. The vote was 10 to 8. I have underneath it, in parentheses, and you'll see, it, you'll see this all maybe next week or the week. This, uh, this appropriation will also fund public arts, poet laureate, and Arlington Alive activities at the discretion and under the supervision of the Arlington Commission on Arts and Culture, come. So that's why I delineated that. It, it, okay, now the next one is Article 46, which we've already voted. So that's 5667. 4,500, uh, 5,000. Okay, so that's 15,167. Uh, okay, and since we've already voted it, that was just adding it up. Okay, 47, appropriation miscellaneous. Uh, we have the legal defense to appropriate some money to replenish legal defense fund. That's zero, the way it has been for several years. Uh, indemnification of medical costs, uh, 8,500 is what the manager is recommending. Uh, these are all the costs which have been submitted in the prior calendar year. Uh, so th this is just a solid number. In other words, this has been uh, this has been added up. Uh, they have to use their own plans first, and then anything that's not covered by their own medical plans, uh, this is what that totals. Paul. Last year it was 8,500. Is it the exact same number this year? That's what they gave us. Okay. Okay, any questions? Do I have a motion? To move. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Uh, for a total of 8,500, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, favorable action. Unanimous. Okay, water bodies fund we've done, community preservation we've done, Article 50, Harry Barber we've done. Uh, okay, this is uh, the retirement. Uh, the, the first one is on the uh, you know, zero appropriation to keep everybody up. And then the other one is the OPEB, are you? Yeah, Car Carol, that's Carolyn's budget. Okay, so we'll do that Wednesday. Okay. Now here, Article 53 is the transfer of funds from Special Education Stabilization Fund. Uh, this is also in the special town meeting. Uh, and so I think they'd rather take it in the special town meeting. Therefore, the appropriate action here would be no action. Yep, so moved. Second? Second. Okay. All those in favor, please uh, say aye. 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 Action. Opposed? Okay. Okay, so that takes care of 53. 54 is the? Wednesday. Wednesday? Okay. Uh, okay, 50. 
five is the transfer of funds from cemetery. The town transfers $200,000 to the cemetery commissioners for the care of town cemeteries, $10,000 to the capital budget for headstone and cleaning and repair, and sums to, uh, said sums to be taken from perpetual care fund. Charlie, Christine, that okay? Yep. Okay. Uh, this is the funds we take out of this perpetual care fund. It's like $4 million or something. I think that's what it was last time. Uh, so moved. Do I have a second? second. Uh, any questions? We didn't vote on we, this last one. We did. Yeah. Last we, we, we voted on the yeah. other yeah. side of it. I'm to go from one to the other. Yeah, we voted it within the capital budget. I see. Oh, wait a minute. You had that in the minutes, didn't you? Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. I'll just say favorable action then unanimous. Okay. So that was done last week on the 8th. Uh, free cash, why don't we, now the use of free cash, this is the amount, we get the certified free cash, we take half, we roll it, we take half, we use it. So this is voted that the sum of 4,850,566 be taken from available funds in the treasury, be used by the assessors uh, to, uh, to determination of the tax rate. Four million. 850,566. So do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. Any questions? This is 54 now. This is 56. Free cash. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous? <coughs> 15. Okay, appropriation, the long-term stabilization fund. Uh, we've been putting $100,000 a year into the permanent long-term stabilization fund uh, for a while. Uh, I think it's right about $3 million now. Uh, this is sort of an emergency fund. This is not a rainy day fund. Uh, so the managers recommended that we continue that policy. Uh, so moved. Second. Okay, moved and seconded for 100,000 into the long-term stabilization fund. Any, oh, excuse me. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, 515. Uh, I don't know this one. For Article 58 is the appropriation into the fiscal stability stabilization fund uh, that's our last vote. That's our last vote. So we got to wait and see. It could be zero. It could be a little bit going in. could be a little bit coming out. Not sure yet. Uh, on the special town meeting, we voted three and four. And Article 5, we can take care of that on Monday. I got I to gotta check out how much was put in there last year. Okay, uh, Tom. Are we saying on Article 59 that there's no dollar value to this if this gets voted in? No, it, this is the money. For years we've been putting money into the Fiscal Stability Fund. No, no, Article 59. Oh, I'm sorry. Are we, are we saying that there's yes or no on 59? There's no, we're guaranteeing the town that there's no dollar value to Article 59. Uh. I'm trying to remember. I thought we had discussed it before. Maybe not. Uh, this is the sanctuary. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the position of the manager and the town council was that the federal government does not have the authority to take money away from one grant because of something else that was done. It has to be related to the grant you're given. Uh, that's their opinion. That's their opinion. That's what we pay them the big bucks for. Correct. Uh, so if, if their opinion is wrong, they're not going to pick up the tab. Well, well but okay, so Dean. just to the comment, because I had actually reviewed this with a, an attorney friend of mine, and he had pointed out to me that um, it's not only an opinion, but it's a, it had supported by legal precedent. So if you remember, and he pointed very quickly for me, he said, um, after the Affordable Care Act was passed, and when the Affordable Care Act was passed, it included a Medicaid or Medi Medicaid expansion. 
program. So the Obama administration went out and said, if you don't adopt this, we're going to take away your Medicaid money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And the court was pretty clear on it. I mean, it was like seven to two that you can't do that. You cannot punish someone for not adopting something. You can't, you know, they, 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 they put a pretty narrow scope on it the last time. So it's not as if this is one of these, like, shots in the dark where there's no legal precedent behind that it. That was what, three years ago? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I think what, what's that kind of 12. interesting about it, what's kind of interesting about it, and I think why it sort of, Tom gets not a lot of play in all of this, is the two dissenting <coughs> justices that said that you can confiscate money from these local governments, state governments, were um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sandra Sotomayor, which means that the sort of conservative wing of the court was who how carried the day on this. Yeah. You know. Three years ago. For all wrong, what is the dollar value this would cost? Six million. Four or five, I think. I think it's four five. Six million. All right. Plus there's I guess one thing to throw into it, there's no legal power to this. It's a resolution. I it's not in the bylaws, it's not anything but and the, it's nothing we're not doing anyway. But it could be a dollar value. <laughs> Could be a dollar value. But it's also, can I, can I say one more thing? It's also, there's a little bit of, I'd say, sort of smoke and mirrors in all of this. Because I had written a clarification to the selectman on this, which is um, we receive $4.5 million of federal money. $3 million of it is passed through money through the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And so even if the federal government wanted to take that $3 million of education money away from us, they couldn't. They have to take it away from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts or specifically add this guidance on top of it that says Massachusetts can't give it to Arlington, which would be incredibly difficult to do. Were you here for the Nixon recession? The million five, on the other hand, is the CDBG money, and that's a direct federal federal grant. And so the million five could be hit. Well, and, and the, I think if we want it to be truthful, for as much as the three million dollars would probably not at risk at all. I don't think we qualify for the million five anymore. If you remember back when the federal sequester happened and our CDBG money got <coughs> cut, I believe we had determined at that point that we were grandfathered in to CDBG and we no longer qualified for it. Now, so that could be taken away, right? And they're cutting it anyway. They're cutting it anyway. I guess in theory they could just take it away, not as to tell not not as um not as sort of retribution for sanctuary cities, but just because we don't qualify anymore. But even then, if you start looking through that, most of that money doesn't go to the town anymore. I mean, the planning department money that was, planning department that was funded through CDBG is, is, is out of that budget. I mean, really, that million five goes to um, local groups in town. So they would be impacted, not as much the town budget. Schools would be impacted under Title One. Right, but that money, Title One actually is from the state from the feds to the state to us. So there's well, some insulation. Uh, it's up to the committee what positions, what uh, articles you want to decide on and what you want to do. Does the committee want to jump into this issue? Somebody make a motion. I uh, move that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> Second. OK, it's been moved and seconded uh, to not Put an issue, put a, uh, a recommendation on Article 59. Any discussion? All those in favor of that, we say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any budgets they can do in 10 minutes? Okay, what budget? All right, well, why don't we go back to the rank at the very end? All right, so, uh, where is it? <coughs> get charged the same thing, the same rate, which is $255 um, 
for 50 minutes, $275 for 60 minutes. So all the schools get charged the same, all the other organizations get charged the same. Um, if you wanted to know the per person charge for public skating, it, depending on how old you are, it's between four and six dollars. The question about retained earnings, so what did I tell you they were? That they were 78839 and yes, some of that is used in the retained earnings for uh, 2018. Um, four, four to six an hour, is that? Yeah, per each person when we do public skating. So seniors pay, or, Children and seniors, I think, pay four dollars, and adults pay pay six. Um, I looked at the previous year's fund balances, and in the rate, they were seventy-nine thousand twenty-one. So it's pretty consistent. Uh, so fifteen was how much? Uh, in twenty fifteen, for the range, it was seventy-nine thousand twenty-one. And for Previous year, we talked about that last time it was 78,839. Um, we've asked what happens when the lease is up in 2025, then we renegotiate. Uh, let's see. We do have um, that line item of admission for roller skating. There is an off season rental for the space for whatever purpose. Um, The question I think you asked, we asked about, about the building capital rent. Yes, so yes, and yes, that is poorly worded, but it's the um, payments for capital investments that it's the part of the revenue from rentals that goes into pay for that. Okay, so, so not all the um, revenue from the rent, just the revenue from the rental. Okay, so that's basically a revenue, not an expenditure. Uh, right, they just didn't know. Yes, and I agree that they have to call it something different, but that's what it was called. Yeah, you maybe know, revenue for capital or something like that. Right. Um, and yes, all everybody's charged the same. Uh, the biggest users are um, the youth programs followed by Arlington High School. And yes, both high schools use the rink. Um, let's see. Maybe if they uh, win the Super 8, uh, <laughs> you can give them a discount. <laughs> um, They're playing actually tonight. Um, okay, so I think that's all I wanted to say about public skating. Um, so I suggest that we vote in as. Okay. So 599, 214 revenue and the same for expenditures. Yeah. And that's your motion. Yes. I have a second. Okay, any other questions or discussion on the ring? Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. 515. Okay, if you want, I can answer questions. If we voted, we approved the recreation, but you still have questions about that. Um, so again, the retained, or the part of the retained earnings that's, <coughs> that's mentioned in this budget comes from those previous, uh, the fund balance. And the reason, part of the reason it's so high, they've been accumulating money in preparation for losing all the revenue from <clears throat> that they used to get from the Gibbs gym. So in order to balance the budget, that's why they're using it. That's how they're going to use that money, because they're not getting it in this coming year from the rentals of the gym, because they don't have the gym anymore. And then there was the, people asked that question about, um, well, Steve asked the question about, do we get rent from the schools? And yes, we do. And then the rec pays rent to the schools for the gyms for the basketball program. And then, um, and along with, we were talking about gray billing rents. Health and Human Services <coughs> now rents space from um, planning and redevelopment because the large tenant left there. So there's a lot of 
gray billing rent going on in this town? So the, the 381,319, I think the focus of the question was how much of that is funds that were paid in that weren't going to be for activities that weren't being used until the summer. Right. Well, the way when I asked John again, he said what they put into retained earnings came from the 381,219, and the rest is going to be used to compensate for the revenue they're not going to get because they don't have access to the big gym. Charlie? Yeah. <clears throat> I talked to Rich Biscay about that. Uh, number and whether that was a genuine balance. And it's a genuine balance. It's not it's not something that would get spent, you know, it's not encumbered in any way. Okay. Right. right. And, we, and we asked the auditors the same question mm -hmm. uh, last week and that the same answer. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so that money will be drained down until they find a substitute location for the gym. Correct. Because they had a lot of programs coming out of there, and now, like I said the last time, they'll they'll do the uh, preschool and after school in the modulars at Thompson, so they'll keep doing that. Um, but they're going and they're doing the basketball by renting the gyms from the schools currently. And what are the other questions about that? I think that was all the questions. Did they own the gym at the Gibbs? Was it 100%? You know, if they charged for that, was that 100%? Or, yeah. or did they have to pay someone? Because I, I assume when the Gibbs reopens, they'll, they'll be able to rent space and run it back out. Yeah, the problem would probably be so that they can't do it during school hours. Right. Yeah. You know, so, right. so they've lost that. Right. And I don't know of any other gym that's not attached to a school. Right, which is why they're going to lose all that now, and they can just do this the uh, you know preschool and after school and the modulars because they won't be being used and then the, the basketball they keep doing but they're doing it by renting out the various gyms from the schools now you know for the coming year so we had approved that budget but I was just trying to answer those questions. sure no I appreciate we appreciate that thank you Are there any other questions on that okay does anybody have a budget they can do in three and a half minutes Probably not. Christine? No, just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Monday, uh, Monday we have the school department coming. Uh, please get questions to uh, the superintendent because they don't have their uh, financial guru uh, with us anymore to answer the technical ones. Uh, Wednesday we'll start off by doing the parking. Uh, try to get that to you. Uh, I don't want to spend all night on the parking, but maybe a half hour, put our fourth vote it and go on. Uh, so please, for the rest of you, please try to get your budgets, and we'll start them on Wednesday, and the sooner we can get them, the fewer nights we have to meet. Paul? Uh, people should remember that Saturday is Civics Day, and our esteemed chair is making a presentation at 11 o'clock. I'm sure everyone will want to go and see. I don't want any of you guys there giving me a hard time. Oh, <laughs> well, we'll just be quiet in the back. Okay. Sit <laughs> so, your turn.